All right, today we're gonna to talk about uh, how, to choose a, how to choose a safe or what safe do I need. Um, so there's a lot of things to take into consideration whenever you're uh, trying to uh, buy a safe. We sell safes all the time. We have all different uh, shapes and sizes of them. We have them as low as the, in the 100 price range and high in the multiple thousands of dollars. Um, you need to take in a lot of different things whenever you're looking for a safe. What are you gonna put in it? Where are you gonna put it at? Uh, are, are you wanting fire protection? Do you want burglary protection? Are you going to be putting photos and media in your safe? Um, do you want it in the floor safe? Do you want it, the safe bolted down to the floor? Do you want it in the wall? Um, all kinds of things to take into consideration when looking for a safe. So we're going to make this video here so we can break that down for you a little bit better and kind of tell you the different things to look for when you're looking for a safe. Okay, so there's a lot of things to look for when you're looking for a safe. So um, First of all, what are you going to put in? What are you going to put in the safe, right? If they tell me they're going to put, you know, just some papers and things like that, then maybe a smaller home safe, or if it's a business that has employees that need to be putting money in, but they don't want the employees to have access inside, so maybe they need a drop safe, or maybe you want one in the floor of your business, or in the wall of your business, or maybe you want a gun safe so you can put all your rifles, or maybe you just have a couple pistols and you need a pistol box. So there's all kinds of different safes. Uh, for all different types of purposes. But let's just kind of give you an overview of what you need to know, what you're looking for, things to look for. So first of all, anytime you go to any of the box stores, you know, your, your Academy, your your Tractor Supply, your Grain Gander Mountain and all those Grangers, all those kind of places, places they have, most of those safes are uh, mass produced um, and those safes are tuned up to be at a certain price point. So they've, they've cut in the necessary corners to get this at that price point that they think they can sell this, this uh, that item at. Don't get me wrong, they, they serve a purpose, they're, they're fine. Some people only need that, that much protection or only want that much protection and they're more concerned with just getting something that gets the job done for a couple hundred bucks. But if you want a quality safe and you really are, you really are concerned with taking care of your items that are in your safe and your property and making sure that they are still there and in one piece whenever something happens, then you might want to go to a locksmith shop, a safe shop. You know, most, most locksmith shops have safes in them, but not all of them. So, one thing you want to look for is the construction of the safe. What kind of, what kind of uh, metal is it made out of, you know? Um, is it, if usually uh, some people come in and say, hey, I'm locked out of my, my uh, safe, I need you to get in, it's a gun safe. And they'll say, okay, send me a picture real quick and I'll, I'll look it up for you. And then we look at it, we're like, oh, this is like $120 metal cabinet. So, you know, those, the term safe is used very loosely. People bring in a, a security, a sentry safe, and we can just pop it open pretty easy. Your same thing with those cabinets, you literally bend the doors back. So anything, um, you want at least a, a, a R, uh, RSC UL rating, okay, or higher. And RSC means residential security container. And then there's commercial security containers also, CSC. Um, and usually 16 to 18 gauge steel is used for those gun cabinets, those flimsy kind of, you can feel that won't can make that noise. Uh, so 16 to 18 gauge steel is used for that, but you can pop those open with screwdrivers and a hammer. They're really not that secure. You're basically just keeping your kids out of it and keeping honest people honest. So you want to look for a safe that has probably at least 12 gauge or higher steel. Okay, most all, I think all these gun safes in here, all our gun safes at least are at least 10 gauge. And, uh, I mean 12 gauge, sorry. Um, and the lower the number, the thicker the steel. So if it's 12 gauge, if you're going from 12 to 10 gauge, it's, it's going thicker and better quality. The lower the number, zero gauge is really big. So you wanna look for something 12 gauge or higher when you're looking for a safe, in my opinion. Uh, also, you have, what are you gonna put in it? If you're putting guns in and stuff and you need a fire rating, you want a fire rating too? Well, they come in many different rating sizes. We have some gun safes that have 45 minute fire ratings, some have 75 minutes, some have 60 minute, some have 90 minute, some have two hours, and then there are some that are even higher than that, but most, most of the time two hours about as high as we go. Um, so fire ratings are another also important thing that you need to be looking for. Also, if you're gonna be storing data or media or photos and things like that, you really gotta be careful with that because even though the safe has a fire rating, those safes are usually meant to keep the temperature of that safe under 350 degrees so that your, your papers don't burn. But photos and data need to be kept below 135 degrees and below 85% humidity to keep those intact. So if you're gonna be putting pictures or like USB jump drives or, I wanna use a swap for this, so I guess, uh, CDs or DVDs, things like that, or external hard drives, 
You want to get a data media safe, and then, it, and then you want to get one that has fire protection too. They make them um, and burglary protection. They're going to cost more because they have to keep that temperature so low inside, but they're out there. So uh, the construction of the safe, what metal is it made of, what fire rating does it have, what are you going to be putting in your safe so that you can make those decisions. Um, also, when it comes to uh, purchasing the safe, make sure you have the locksmith bolted down. That's another good service that we offer. So if you ever, if you need it delivered and you want it, uh, you know, if you want to bolt it down your floor so someone can't just come in and pick it up, you know, make sure that your safe has a hole in the bottom so it can be bolted down. Well, nearly all of them do, except for maybe some of the ones you, you get at like Office Depot and Walmart and things like that. Some of those don't have a hole in them, but most, all the safes have at least one or four holes in it so that you can bolt it down to the floor. So, uh, we touched on that. Uh, also, keypad, what type of keypad do you want on it? Do you want an electronic keypad or do you want a manual? Now manual, if you need to get in quick, it's a lot harder because you gotta go do your whole pattern, left, right, left, right. You know, or you can do electronic, you just enter a couple of codes, uh, numbers, hit the button and it opens your safe. Yes, things could go uh, wrong with electronic, more likely than going wrong mechanically, but they all go wrong uh, sometimes, you know, but uh, I would say they're both pretty reliable these days, so I wouldn't I wouldn't have a preference. I, I would say they're both pretty reliable. Um, even some of them have EMP protection now too, so uh, EMP protection is uh, electromagnetic pulse. Uh, and uh, some of you are familiar with Call of Duty and stuff, you throw an EMP grenade, it takes out every all the electronics in the vicinity. So um, if someone was to set off a device like that in the area, at least you're able to access your guns when things are going bad. Um, so that's a cool little feature they have. And, and EMP doesn't just happen just from a man-made event too. You could have uh, solar flares and lightning storms that, that create EMP. So anyway, that's another little thing to look into. So let me, uh, now that we've touched on some of the basics, basically you got the construction, the steel of it, what's the fire rating, uh, what's, um, what do you mean putting in it, how, what size do you need it? That's, I mean, that's all based off the customers, uh, where, where they're gonna be putting it at. And then um, let me take you inside of some of these and uh, show you some of the features. And that way it help you think of a safe. Okay, so this is a Blackhawk uh, BHS 45E. Uh, it's a Blackhawk series 45 gun uh, safe. So I got it open here, it has a light kit in it. So I mean, some, some safes come with light kits also. So if you have a, a bigger safe, uh, that might be a feature that you'd like. Um, this right here is called an intumescent seal. Uh, what this does is made it expand up to eight size, uh, eight times its size so that if it gets a lot of steam or heat or, uh, or water starts to seep in because they're putting out a fire or something, that expands up to eight times and seals this door off so that things don't seep through the cracks. Um, or even with water splitting up, at least it helps, you know. It's not waterproof, but it'll help negate that. So um, when you're looking for a safe, I'd make small things like this, an intumescent seal. That makes a big difference. Not all safes have those. So Holland has those on all their gun safes. So intumescent seal. Uh, also, re, uh, reinforced shelves. This is probably something that nobody hardly ever talks about. And my safe, my first safe, gun safe I had, I put a lot of ammo on it and it was bowed like this in the middle. So I had to put all my big ammo on the edges and my 22 ammo in the middle so it wouldn't sag. So these have reinforced metal rails running down the front and back. So that's a great feature to look for. Also look at the quality of the the workmanship on it, make sure that it's not it's gonna peel off and fall apart. Most most uh, safe companies do a good job of that. Um, this one has outlets down here, it has three outlets and it has uh, two USB ports. So if you're gonna be charging scopes or dehumidifiers to keep the humidity down, uh, that's something you might wanna look for. Uh, also heavy duty canvas inside on the door that have this material here. So you can put all your pistols, ammo, or booklets or maybe manuals to your your scopes or your guns or whatever you want to put in here, port papers. This is a uh, pretty common, uh, at least in Holland's gun safe, they're going to come in all their safes. So those are some of the things you want to look for uh, on a gun safe at least. I could open up another one here and, and show you in a second, but another, another feature on the outside, you always look, there's different three spoke handles, five spoke, this is a black satin nickel, this is a chrome finish. This is an SNG keypad, which is Sergeant Greenleaf. They're, they're the best in the industry, in my opinion. They've been around a long time. Um, but you got an electronic keypad right here, so if you want manual, or do you want electronic, pay attention to those little features too, because you're gonna be, once you buy the safe, it's yours. Um, then you have the heavy duty ball hinges. I like these hinges 
as opposed to hinges like this. Obviously, right? you got a lot of weight on them, so much smaller hinges, much lower price point, of course, and then these are heavy duty bolt style hinges. So your, your door is never gonna sag with hinges like these. So let me open up another uh, smaller safe and show you some more features. All right, so this is a FB845E by Holland. It's a fire and burglary rated safe, okay? So look how thick the door is there. See all the, uh, you have the different diameters of bolts too. Some safes come with smaller diameter bolts. Some of them come with uh, um, more bolts. So you might have two up here instead of one, and they have five down here instead of three. And then some may have just a lip that interacts and locks in, or some may have some non-active bolts that are always protruding because they never retract, so they're called non-active bolts versus active bolts. So these you have active on the top, bottom, and then the side, and you have a non-active, basically a, a bar that kind of seeps in behind. So if someone tries cutting the hinges off on these things, it's not gonna do anything. They're not gonna get in, which believe it or not, people try it all the time. So on this one here, uh, another thing you might wanna look for is, you know, does it have shelves? Are they adjustable? How many shelves does the safe come with? Right, things like that. Uh, some feature, common features of fire burglar rated safes, at least this one here, is uh, it's two hour fire rated at 1750 degrees. That's, that's a really high rating. That's why it's a fire and burglary rated safe. It's specifically made to have good protection for fire and good protection for burglary. So it's also 30 foot drop tested. Some of the safes will say, hey, it has a 30 foot impact rated and things like that. So those are things you wanna look for also to make sure you're getting a sturdy safe. Another important thing also uh, for burglary protection is, does your safe have a hardened steel plate protecting the, the lock pack? And does it have a relocker? And what kind of relocker is it? Is it a spring loader relocker? Is it a glass relocker? So those kind of things, and I'll tell you what that is. So common ways that, that crooks try to get in is sometimes they'll try to break this off and then there's a hole where the wire for this goes through to the lock pack on the inside. Sometimes they'll stick something in there, screwdriver, start hitting hard as they can, hoping they can knock that lock pack off. It's a good idea to knock the lock pack off. You're gonna freely be able to, to pull the rails back and forth because all that's holding it is that, that piece on that lock pack. So if they were to do that and successfully knock off that lock pack through that hole, then they would be able to get in your safe. But what they did is they attach a plate to the back of it that's holding a spring-loaded steel beam, like a, about that big. When they knock it off, the beam drops into the rail. And now they have a relocker somewhere in here, which they don't know where, that is holding that thing safe. And now they pretty much need to move on. Unless you're an expert safe driller, you need to move on at that point. So it protects you with the relocker. And then he goes another step further on this one here, on the fire and burglary rated, they don't have just that type of relocker. They go a step further and put a glass relocker. Glass relocker, someone's drilling on it. And as soon as they tap that glass, if they're drilling on your safe and they tap that glass, it cracks. And it has a, a hole in the glass that has a cable, a little metal cable that's attached to a, a, a spring-loaded beam. And when that piece of glass breaks, there goes the beam and it locks up in, into the railing system. So uh, that's something you want to look for. Hardened steel plate, relockers. Is it regular relockers and glass relocker? So, uh, and then you have heavy duty bolt hinges on this one also. So that's some things you want to look for for fire and burglar rated safes are really good if you want to mix up both. Those, that's what you want to go to. Um, now I have another one over here. This is an AMSET. This is a, a CSC, which is a uh, commercial security container. Uh, it's not quite as high rated uh, as that one. That one has a, that's, uh, that one right there has, um, is, no, is made for fire and burglary specifically. This one here is, uh, you still, you have a two hour fire rating on this particular model at 1700 degrees. And uh, it has uh, the tempered glass relocker on this one also. So, uh, and the hardened steel plate too that protects the body. So you have equal protection pretty much um, is that one over there. This is just the AMSEC version. And this one comes with, you know, three, three adjustable shelves. So if you're, if you're really close on the siding of two, be like, oh, this one comes with three shelves. This one comes with two. This one has the glass relocker. This one doesn't, you know, things like that to take into consideration. Um, also, and then you'll see on some of these where it says in here, interior temperature less than 350 degrees for a period of two hours at 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. So these things are tested. So you want to look for UL uh, ratings too. So. UL Underwriter Laboratories has been around a long time. They test all kinds of things. They're the standard, basically, in the industry. They, they test all kinds of fire tests on these things, and integrity tests on the steel, and 
And that's what you want to look for is a UL rated safe because those are the ones that have been tested by a very reputable company. So uh, this also has that same kind of seal we were talking about on earlier, that intimescent seal. And these have non-active bolts on this one. See, the other one had that grip. This one has non-active bolts. It also has a feature here to when the door closes, it automatically throws the bolts, has a spring-loaded, you know, relocker kind of. That one does over there too, also. So, and this one has your uh, electronic keypad on. So, we also have, uh, also, if you're looking for like something smaller, like maybe just to put a pistol in or something, we have some pistol boxes. So let's go over and check those out. So as you can see, a safe's come in all different shapes and sizes, all different types of ratings, you know, this one has a 45 minute fire rating. That one just had a two hour fire rating. So there's, there's the price is adjustable according to what you, you're paying for what you get basically. So uh, there is a price point for nearly everybody. Uh, so if you're in your local area, stop by a locksmith shop, check out their safes. You're gonna get a much better selection than you will at like Tractor Supply at, uh, or Office Depot or Academy. So over here, I have some pistol safes. Um, Pistol safes aren't, they're not fire rated. There's no fire rating on these. Basically, they're just keep your pistol safe, keep them out of your kids' hands, keep them quick access. Most of them have uh, a hole of some sort so you can bolt it on the side of something or, or in a drawer or on the edge of something so that you can just enter your code and quickly get your gun, right? And this one's the same thing, basically just a double gun. So when you're choosing a safe, when you're choosing a safe to summarize this all up you want to make sure it's made of good quality steel you know preferably 12 gauge or less uh you want to make sure your fire rating is is where you want it you know 30 minute 45 minute one hour uh you know hour 15 hour and a half two hours you have a wide variety on the fire ratings you also want to make sure it's ul listed you know check that make sure it's been tested right that is tested by a reputable company also does it have fire protection does it have burglary protection is there a relocker? Is there a hardened steel plate in there protecting it? Does it have an intumescent seal? Does it have places for me to bolt the safe down? Does it have a light kit? Does it have plugs in it? Does it have adjustable shelving? How many shelves does it have? Does it have pockets on the door? Does it have, you know, all these different things. There's a ton of different things to look for. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. There's a lot of information to, to share there. Uh, we carry uh, Holland safes made here in Texas and American security safes. So uh, if you're interested in safe, check them out. You can go to AMSEC, uh, AMSEC USA to look at their safes. You can go to hollandsafe.com for Holland safes. And we carry both here. So hopefully you learned a lot from this. There's so much to cover. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. Uh, thanks for tuning in again. Please hit the subscribe button, uh, the bell icon, um, and uh, you can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or on all the social media platforms. Also, we have another channel we're working on called Udropreneur, U-D-R-O-P-R-E-N-E-U-R. Uh, and that's another side project channel that we just got off the ground. So if you would subscribe to that, or at least tune in for it, we'd appreciate it. And uh, please put the link up here for you too, so you can go ahead and, uh, and check that out. Thanks again.